In this video, I'm going to show you how I use my desktop CNC machine to build this one-of-a-kind music box slash picture frame that I designed as a gift for my daughter. I think it came out pretty cool. This project involves what are definitely the smallest components I've ever tried carving on my machine, uh, specifically the parts that make up that tiny plane. But that is just one of the reasons that I had so much fun building it. I also incorporated a basic gear system mounted directly to the music box that turns the spinning disc that makes up the skyline. And to make things a bit fancier, instead of painting the images that you see flying over the mounted range, I filled them with epoxy resin because, well, this is YouTube and I think I'm supposed to use epoxy resin on, well, every video. Now at first glance, this probably seems fairly advanced as far as CNC projects go, uh, but I promise that if you stick around to the end of this video, you'll see that when you break things down into their basic components, it's actually pretty simple. And to make things even easier for you, I created what I think are probably the most detailed CNC files that you can find online. Not only do they include all the required SVG files, but what makes them really unique is the accompanying PDF instruction manual that walks you through every step of the process, from gathering materials and hardware, to assigning G-code for each component, all the way to the assembly process. I'll touch more on those a little bit later, but if you want to follow along as you watch this video, uh, check out the link down below and you'll find a PDF version that you can download for free uh, and kind of browse before you buy. Anyway, my name's Justin. This is Aquavita Woodworks, and well, let's just go build this thing. So to start off, obviously I had to design this thing, and in order to do that, I like to use SketchUp as my 3D modeling program. Uh, now I am self-taught, and although SketchUp is a pretty basic program in terms of 3D modeling, uh, it do take a long time to play around with things, and because of that, I didn't really record much of that process. That being said, here is what I finally settled on after way too many hours of messing around. The design itself is made up of three basic pieces that get pressed and screwed together, which for the sake of simplicity, I'll refer to as the faceplate, the sound box, and the airplane. Up first we have the faceplate, which is probably the most interesting piece uh, because it includes the spinning skyline and the main picture frame with the inlaid epoxy mountain range. The spinning disc gets attached to the back of this component using a quarter inch metal dowel and in order to keep the friction down as it spins, I pocketed out areas in the middle so I could install ball bearings. The picture frame itself will hold a standard 4x6 landscape photograph and to help hold it in place I'll use the CNC to cut out a piece of clear acrylic that I can screw directly over the top. Up next we have the sound box, which will be the main housing for our music box. And one thing to note here is that I did design this project specifically to fit this music box that I purchased off Amazon. The only part of this project that I actually prototyped before making anything uh, was the shape of the bottom of this box so that I could make sure that everything was lined up correctly uh, once it was screwed into place. I'll post a link to that music box in the video description of this video because if you do decide to build this project, uh, you will need that specific music box since, well, that's what it's designed around. Once assembled, the sound box will have two tenons that stick out the front that will fit directly into the corresponding dados on the back of the faceplate. Those tenons make sure that once these two parts are put together, the drive gear attached to the music box lines up directly with the gear built into the spinning disc. And the last part of the sound box are the two lengths of 6mm diameter metal dowel rod uh, that get passed through the holes in the top and hammered into the corresponding holes at the bottom. These metal rods will be used to support the third and final component of this project, uh, the airplane. As mentioned earlier in this video, the airplane is made up of the smallest components that I've ever tried carving out on my machine. The propeller itself is just over half an inch in length and less than sixteenth of an inch thick, so yeah. It's really tiny. The plane itself is attached to a bent 8th inch metal dowel that's bent over the top of the spinning disc and attached to the two metal rods sticking out of the sound box. The final product should look something like this once it's all assembled, and if I break down all the components and organize them based on their thickness, uh, we can clearly see all of the parts that we need to cut out on our machine. From there, it's just a matter of exporting these images as two-dimensional vector files directly into our CNC CAD slash CAM program so we can assign CNC toolpaths. 
Now, before we jump into actually carving anything out, I do want to note that what you're about to see in this video uh, does differ slightly than what I actually ended up settling on in the end. My original plan was to have the airplane component ride up and down as it rides on the groove in the back of the spinning disc, uh, but due to friction and lack of torque on the music box, that just didn't end up working out. Because I scrapped those components in the final version of the project, uh, what you see in the build plans differ slightly than what's in this video. Uh, just know that the build plans on my website uh, are the final and complete version of this project and will work. That being said, now that we have our vector files in our CAD program, uh, let's go over what CNC bits we'll need in order to build this project. On the screen right now, you'll see a full list of all the bits that I used while making this music box. And as you can see, there really isn't anything too fancy. The two bits on here that you may not already have in your inventory are the 16th inch downcut bit, which is just a smaller diameter bit than some people are used to using, uh, and then the 8th inch O-flute bit that's required for cutting the acrylic. Now I like to use Bits and Bits Company for all of my CNC bits, uh, so if you don't already have what's required, I'll post links down below so you can get started right away. Now these are affiliate links, so if you do decide to purchase them, I get a small kickback, uh, but it costs you nothing extra, and honestly, it just helps keep the lights on in my shop. But as an extra perk for using those links, if you decide to do so, uh, use the code AQUAVITA at checkout, and you'll get 10% off your entire order. Now outside of the CNC bits that I like to use, the next question most people usually have about my projects is what type of CNC toolpaths I use to make them. The PDF instruction manual that I keep referring to does go over all of that information in detail, uh, but I'll post that page from the booklet on the screen right now so that you can pause it and read if you want to. And with all of that out of the way, let's finally go cut some wood. So those first two components that make up the faceplate are the most complicated to carve since they are double-sided and require the use of epoxy. Uh, just make sure that when you flip them over, you're lining up your X and Y zero locations to make sure that everything is accurate when you carve the back side, uh, and obviously make sure that the epoxy is fully cured before you try to sand it flush. With those done, now I'm going to carve the quarter inch and half inch components that make up the majority of the sound box, as well as some smaller parts like gears and parts of the airplane. Uh, what you are about to see is what I mentioned earlier that's slightly different than the final plans, so take that into account as you watch this video. Just know that the final version uh, is actually less components because I ended up combining a few of them. So yeah, let's get to it.
All right, so with everything off the machine, now it's just a matter of freeing them from their tabs using whatever method you like to use. I prefer to use a multi-tool to cut them free and then head over to my oscillating spindle sander uh, to sand them flush. Once that's done, I did do some light sanding out to all the parts before I got started on gluing up the sound box uh, and then the small airplane. The sound box is fairly straightforward since all the components are designed and machined to fit together like a puzzle, uh, but I did get a little aggressive while sanding them, which caused me to have a few gaps uh, that needed to be filled with some wood filler. Either way, after that glue up and letting it sit overnight, I think it ended up coming out pretty decent. The airplane is a little bit trickier since the parts are so small, and I actually ended up breaking a few of them uh, and needed to make some repairs using CA glue. The airplane body gets aligned and glued together using 8th inch dowels, uh, which will then get flush cut once everything is dry. The tail wing of the plane gets glued into place by sliding it through the pocketed out hole in the rear of the plane, and then I did need to drill a few holes to accept some metal dowels. An 8th inch hole gets drilled on the top of the plane, and then a smaller 16th inch hole gets drilled right in the front uh, that will later be used to help align the propeller. I used my drill press to do all of that, but if you only have access to a hand drill, uh, that's totally fine. The main wing of the plane will then get glued on top by lining it up with the hole that we just drilled, and then the tail fin gets glued into place right above the tail wing. I used CA glue for all of this uh, because I find it the easiest, but I guess that's totally up to you. If you want to use epoxy, I'm sure that would also work, uh, but it just might take a little longer to set. And with all of our components finally glued up, I gave everything a final sanding up to 220 grit uh, before finishing them with a few coats of spray lacquer uh, over the course of a few days. And with that, I was finally ready to start assembling this thing, which I'm not gonna lie, was extremely satisfying. First, I attached the spinning disc to the picture frame component by hammering in a metal dowel and locking the disc in place using an internal tooth lock washer. I didn't film it, but I did put some paste wax on these two components to try to help bring down any friction that may be between them. Next, I took that tiny little gear we carved and screwed it into place on the music box turntable uh, before screwing in the box itself to the sound box uh, and then tightening down the gear. After that, I just needed to press fit those two components together and screw them into place using the holes I drilled in the back of the sound box. And finally, I bent an eighth inch metal rod to the shape that I wanted and glued it to my airplane before press fitting the other end of it to the top of the two rods that stick out from the top of the sound box. And with that, I finally have a main body of this music box and could play around to see if it ended up working out. After a few minor adjustments, I was happy with how it was working, uh, so I went ahead and carved a simple piece of acrylic on the CNC uh, before picking out a picture, taping it to the front of my music box, and then securing the acrylic over the top of it using four screws. Uh, and with that, we finally have a finished music box. That's all I got for you today, guys. If you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I guess I'll see you at the next one. Take it easy.